Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla News, episode 164. Tesla is gaining in the overall car market in the US and is now a bigger OEM than all the Germans. And Tesla is heading for a new sales record in the US, China and Europe. So no doubt that we will get a new sales record sometime today. And new electric semi-truck is out here in Europe. And Tesla's Model Y and Model 3 is about to get a new range boost. And Toyota is facing a lot of heat and lost their case in federal court. And while the other OEMs are cutting costs on employees, Tesla is building more and more new facilities. And we got a release of one more thing. The Giga Beer. <laughs> All of this and much much more on today's episode. Let's dive right in. In the US we see Tesla is the one taking more market share of the overall car market. As you can see on this list, Tesla gained 1.4% in Q1 compared to calendar year of 2022. That was the biggest gain of anyone. Toyota was down 2%. And if we look at Tesla's sales in Q1 compared to Q4 of last year, well, they grew 37.6%. Also, the biggest growth of anyone. Again, Toyota was down 13.5%. And all the Germans are down as well. BMW with as much as 26.2%. So they still have a lot of seasonal change in their sales, but someone like Tesla does not. This is a really good showcase that Tesla is still growing very fast, as their Q1 is not down compared to Q4. Just as we see with Lucid, even though they only grew with about 300 units, their Q1 is still bigger than the Q4 because they are ramping up their production and are still growing. When compared to Q1 of last year, things look a little more steady for the old guys, except Toyota again and Stellantis, which is both down 9.7 and 11.2% respectively. But Tesla also rose almost 40%. So up from 129,000 to 180,000 in sales units. And of course, Lucid and Rivians have huge gains as they come from almost nothing in Q1 of last year as they started production in September 2021. So the EV market belongs to Tesla in the US, but Tesla is slowly but steadily gaining in the overall car market. As we can see, Tesla is now with its 5.1%, a bigger OEM in the US than Volkswagen. That sits with 4.1%, even though Volkswagen thinks their ID bus and ID7 will help Volkswagen to gain 10% market share in the US by 2030. Well, that is some big gains for a little electric camper that doesn't even have camp mode. <laughs> that is just German software in a nutshell. A camper that can't do camp mode. Sure. So Tesla is now a bigger OEM than any of the German OEMs in the US. Not EV, just a bigger automaker than both BMW, Mercedes, Audi and Volkswagen. And Tesla is about to explode in the US with the Cybertruck coming. As the Cybertruck is, according to new data, the most anticipated EV of 2023. No shit. The Cybertruck generated more than twice the numbers of Google search than the entire nine vehicles on this top 10 list combined. Yes, the EV market in the US belongs to Tesla and everyone else is just paying rent. And are slowly but steadily gaining market share in the overall market. And Tesla is not doing this through debt and selling everything to no margins. No, James Stephenson put together this great chart showing off the difference between Tesla and the other US automaker. Here you can see Tesla is way behind. No, wait, oh, that's debt, sorry. Okay, so here is about having the least amount, especially in a market where interest rates are rising and you have to pay interest on those billions of dollars in debt. But then we have this chart where we can see Tesla's debt is starting to rise fast. No, wait, that's, oh, that's EPS. 
earnings per share. So the more the better. And here we see Tesla having about five times more than both Ford and GM. And let's just take one more chart from James. Here we can see Ford and GM have a flat line over the last decade, but Tesla is shooting straight for them or rather straight past them as they will probably by 2025 have left them behind in revenue as well. So yeah, Tesla is doing extremely well in the US on all counts, sales, revenue, debt, cash flow, market share, you name it. And I will bet you guys watching are spending a fair amount of time online and on your connected devices. I know I am. My job is being on a computer all day. And when I'm not working, I might be streaming some entertainment on some of my smart devices. And all my personal information is on my smartphone. That is why using a VPN server is a very good idea and why I have partnered up with today's sponsor NordVPN. Because VPN stands for Virtual Private Network and private being the key word there. A VPN will encrypt internet traffic and hide your IP address and virtual location. So it will boost your privacy and security online, which is much needed these days. And a VPN protection makes hacking close to impossible. So for me, this is one of the most important things about using a VPN provider to get that peace of mind that your data and online activities are secure. Because NordVPN does much more than just change your IP address. It blocks malware, stop intrusive tracking, block intrusive ads on the spot, and it has always on cybersecurity. So even if you're not connected to a VPN server, it still protects your online browsing. But of course, I also use the ability to change my IP address all the time, as I can get access to a lot more contents on streaming services like Netflix because there is different content depending on your location. So if I want access to something on Netflix that is only available in the US, I just turn on NordVPN and change my location to the US and voila, my digital location is now in the US and the user interface couldn't be any simpler. You just click the country you want your IP address to be in and that's it couldn't be any simpler. If you want to check it out, and you should if you care about your online privacy and security, NordVPN have a great deal for you. By clicking my link down below, you will get four bonus months for free on a two year plan. And it's risk free with NordVPN's 30 day money back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. So click the link down below to get started today. And a big thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. But it is not just in the US Tesla is killing it. In Europe, Tesla is pulling further away. And in Norway, Tesla just continues to climb, towering high above even the Volkswagen Group. Just look at the sales on the 27th of March, 636 vehicles in one day in little Norway. And the Model Y is beyond anything else in Norway. You can combine the sales of all these EV favorites like the Toyota BZ4X, the ID3, the ID4, the ID5, Volvo's XC40s, the Skoda Enyaq, Audi Q4 e-tron, the Ionic 5 and 6, Mercedes EQB, the EQA, the Mustang Mark E and the Nissan Array, the BMW i4 and the MG4. <sighs> and they will not have so sold as many units combined than Tesla's one model, the Model Y. But Tesla need more models. No, the others need more units. As Tesla now sits on 38.3% of the EV market share in Norway, that is like 80% of the market, in the country that the so-called experts said that Tesla would drop now as the EV penetration was so high and all the competition was there of course. And Norway already had a very high volumes of Teslas, but I guess they were wrong. As we can see, they have sold more Teslas in Norway year to date than Tesla did in all of 2020. And March is the biggest month ever in Norway. And in my country of Denmark, Tesla's Model Y continues to be the dominating force. As I reported on before, the Tesla Model Y was the best selling car of any kind in Denmark in the first two months of the year. And as you can see on this top 10 list here, all the other cars are small, cheap cars. And then the Tesla Model Y on the top spot. But even though the Tesla Model Y was already ahead, Tesla just sold 120% more Model Ys in March than they did in February. 
So it doesn't seem like Tesla's Model Y will lose the first position in Denmark anytime soon. Or if we take the four countries in Europe that actually gives us daily sales numbers, we can see that Tesla has shot past the Volkswagen Group as the leader. If we look at them in the bar chart, we can see that Tesla gained on the entire Volkswagen Group, but in March they sold about twice as many EVs than the Volkswagen Group. Even the doubters has to admit now that Tesla has no competition in Europe as of now. But if we look at the overall countries that gives EV sales numbers, not all numbers are up to date of course because they don't give daily updates, well the Volkswagen Group is still ahead, but Tesla is gaining on them. Now only 9000 units to go. I did make a video this week about Wright's law and how this will help Tesla continue to have great cross margins. But one one thing people also forget will push Tesla's margin higher is that the Model Y, we're talking about all over the place here, is a more expensive vehicle than the Tesla Model 3 and the Model Y is cheaper for Tesla to produce. And that model is about to become the world's best selling car and here in Europe at least the Model Y is outselling the Model 3 6 to 1, in some countries even 8 to 1. But the Model Y in February did also become the best selling model of any kind in Europe, up 173%, while the all time favorite, the Volkswagen Golf, was down 11%. This will all greatly improve Tesla's average selling price and cross margin here in Europe. And what do you know, Tesla's demand problem in China have resulted in a new all-time high sales record in China domestically. And that was last week's insurance number, so Tesla had five more days to boost its new record. So with last week's numbers, Tesla should have something like 126,000 units in sales in Q1, but they will probably add another 10,000 units to that number this week. So we are talking about 136,000 units sold in China domestically. So beating their old record with about 14,000 units. And these numbers are without all the exported vehicles, of course, and Tesla just started delivering of the Plaid Model S and X in China. So that will probably help Tesla's margin and of course the halo effect for the whole company. So Tesla is going against the trend right now in China as the car market is experiencing some trouble. Even BYD has lower sales numbers in Q1 than Q4 of last year while Tesla is setting new sales record in Q1, the lowest quarter of the year. So that just makes Tesla's record even more impressive. But BYD did report on their Q4 numbers for 22 and they saw more than a tenfold year on year increase in net profits in the fourth quarter. As its new energy vehicles, sales grew significantly. So that is very cool. They had about $1 billion in net income in Q4 and the company's cross margin was 19%. Seems like Wright's law here is working for BYD as well, as I talked about in my video this week, about how Tesla will be able to keep this high margin even with their price cuts. But BYD's number here are the combined unit sales of their BEVs and hybrids, of course. So we still don't know how much they earn on their BEVs only, but nice to see them being profitable. But at least we know that they earn about $1,400 per vehicle they sell in net profits, where Tesla does close to 10,000. But let's see how it all looks after all the price costs we have had here in Q1, if they can maintain those profits. But Tesla seems to be hitting new records in Europe, US and China. So no doubt we will have new sales record for Tesla in Q1. The question is only how much. My guess is with the information I have available about 433,000. I have the max capacity of the Berlin factory at 48,000, Fremont at 162,000 and Texas at 43,000 and then Shanghai at about 241,000. And that is after subtracting about 30,000 units because of the 10 days lockdown because of Chinese New Year, but we have heard they are running at full capacity now. And then I subtract about 5% of the overall numbers in downtown compared to the max capacity and about 8% from that to get to my deliveries. So about 433,000 deliveries and 471 units in 
production. So quite a bit over Wall Street's estimates. That is 420. Yes, it happened. <laughs> Wall Street's estimate is 420 thousand units for Q1, but I am usually a bit or too optimistic and Wall Street a bit too pessimistic. So maybe somewhere in between. Where we do find Troy Tesla's numbers of 427 thousand units. So we will see if he will be right again. But we should get the final numbers sometime today. And we get to see some more electric semi trucks, so that is great. But it also shows us just how far ahead Tesla's semi truck is compared to the so called competition. Designwerk is a Swiss company making a lot of battery technology and have now also made their first electric semi truck. So that is very nice, but also a good showcase of how much better Tesla's battery technology and powertrain and electric motors are, as they have an 870 kilowatt hour battery pack. So the same size we expect to be in the Tesla semi truck. To get 310 miles of range and Tesla gets 500 miles of range. Even without a trailer on their 870 kilowatt hour semi truck, it can only do 640 kilometers, where Tesla can do about 800 kilometers with a trailer fully loaded. So with Tesla, you get about 60% more range for your buck and design work semi truck can charge from 10 to 80% in three and a half hour. So get about 220 miles of range in three and a half hours, where Tesla will get about 350 miles of range in only 30 minutes. So it gets about 60% more range seven times faster. <laughs> and to make it even worse, the Tesla Simmetruck range is EPA range and DesignVac is in here in Europe. So I will bet you it is WLTP range. So the real world difference is probably much higher. So DesignVac has to be very cheap compared to the Tesla Simmetruck to even be a consideration for trucking companies. But with the 870 kilowatt hour battery, I highly doubt it is going to be affordable. In an industry where time is money, the Tesla Sigma truck will hardly have any real competition. And the Model 3 and Y is about to get a range boost. As CATL is about to start production of its next generation LFP batteries, the M3P batteries, that increase the energy density from about 180 to 210 watt hours per kilogram. So a boost about 15% in energy density. That should translate to about 10% increase in range, so about 27 miles. But the battery should at the same time become cheaper. But electric vehicles will always be too expensive and there's not enough range. Well, this is just one step in one battery technology, many more to come. And now Tesla will be able to make the Model 3 and Y standard range for less because the batteries is getting cheaper, but at the same time make the car go further or make a smaller battery pack to keep the same range to make the car even cheaper and lighter, of course, and therefore it also increases the range of the car. So this is just another thing that will help Tesla with keeping its margin above 20% as Tesla should be able to get this into their production within the next couple of months. As Tesla has been preparing for this battery for quite a while and it will become part of Tesla's structural battery pack at their Shanghai plant, making their cars handle even better as well. And Tesla will be the only one getting this battery as of now, as no one else can actually use these new batteries just yet. But Tesla has been working with CATL on this and is ready to go to get these batteries. As we know, Tesla can use pretty much any kind of battery chemistry, or if not, they will quickly be able to make the change to make sure they can. And their next generation vehicle will be able to use every kind of battery chemistry. The other guys takes years to make these kinds of change, so Tesla will be the only one benefiting from CATL's new M3P battery just yet. And Tesla is already the one with the most efficient powertrain and the most margins on their cars. And now they will get even more range with their standard range cars and the car itself will become cheaper for Tesla to produce. So Tesla will pull even further away from the competition. Remember, Ford and GM doesn't even use LFP batteries yet and Tesla is already going to use the next generation of LFP batteries. So when the others will be ready to actually use LFP batteries in three years time from now, Tesla will already have moved on to something.
better. They will not be able to keep up with Tesla's pace of innovation. As Elon said many times, that is the only thing that matters. Because Tesla will buy everything CATL can make. Tesla is by far CATL's biggest, most important customer. Tesla is such a big customer for CATL that the battery company set up its new 70 gigawatt hour factory just three miles from Tesla's Shanghai factory. The old guys have no chance keeping up against this. And CATL and Tesla are even going to build a new battery plant in the US, maybe in Texas. But we will see as the location is not yet finalized. But Tesla is not holding back. And let's get our monthly update about Tesla's Giga factory. So that means handing it over to Brian from My Tesla Weekend. Take it away, Brian. Hey Lars, well there's a lot to cover this month, so let's just get started. In Shanghai, at the southwest corner, there's a bridge that's been underway for some time. It is nearing completion. It's got its deck and it's ready to go. This should be open by our next update. The southeast side, just outside the boundaries of the site, where we've seen a lot of offices and whatnot, has been cleared and torn up. In Berlin, the casting roof is in, almost all of the columns are in, and most of the beams have been put in, and there is now a bridge crane that's been installed. The interchange bridge at the highway has got a lot more work on the east side of it. The road widening is moving quickly, and at the south central, the parking and access areas, they're getting a lot of paving, they're getting a lot of enhancements, they're getting finished. The commuter rail station we've been watching is finally back underway. The logistics lot just south of the Motor Works building has gotten put into use, and you can see a lot of silver vehicles there. That indicates a nice fat margin for the quarter. There's pavement in the east central pad that we've been watching. At the far northeast of the site, there is a trailer yard that has been expanded a bit with new pavement and more grading and clearing to expand it even further, we believe. In Texas, well, what would Texas be without a bit of concrete rework like we see on the east side? At the south of the factory, that's where the big excitement is this month. The road's been removed. The superchargers that were in the southwest corner have been removed. The old drainage in this area has been dug up and rerouted. They're making a lot of headway here, and they've already filed permits to expand the building southward. It will reach almost one mile in length when this expansion is complete. There's more staining going on on the walls to the southwest corner of the location. In the middle of the west side of the building, we can see the cyber berm has been torn up a bit. It's being reworked for that entrance there. In the far southeast, they've graded a new big flat pad. The cathode building is looking so pretty. The apron has some concrete work. There are more crates there, and uh, it's closing off a bit. And the dye shop, it's got the rest of its steel. Most of it has been painted on the inside. Walls are going up, and slabs are being poured within. The switchyard has transformers that have been installed, and new towers for the high voltage lines, with wires already connecting them to the substation. And the mega pack area, which we've long been watching, it's just a triangle. Well, it's not a triangle anymore. Now it's a rectangle. And they did that by tearing up the old access road that led to the concrete batch plant. This has been graded, and it means that they can start considering uh, installing the mega packs for this location. Back to you, Lars. Thank you so much for that update, Brian. See you next month. Or actually see you this month in London at the For The Chance live show. If anybody else watching is going to be there, don't forget to come to say hi to me and Brian. And let's squeeze in the last short news topics into this new show. Yes, it's time for the Tesla Shorts. The US Air Force is using SpaceX Starlink on aircraft in the Indo-Pacific region. And a general said, I was extremely impressed with the capabilities. Compared to the US Air Force own satellite system called Hawkeye, which cost 250,000 US dollars with a slower internet speed, SpaceX takes $25,000 for the Starlink aviation. So fast about a tenth of the cost. Talk about disruptive technology. And our Tesla just got better once again as Tesla improved climate control 
by adding the climate system warming up feature in a new update. The vehicle will now prevent cold air from being blown into the cabin before it has warmed up significantly. A lovely new feature for my almost four year old Tesla Model 3. And we did get some nice video clips of the Cybertruck this week as someone was clearly out test driving it. This truck just looks so CGI. And Homas showed off a great video this week with Full Self Driving Beta version 11 3.3 where he let it do everything as an Uber driver. It went to the pickup location and drove the customer all the way to the destination. A 15 minute drive through the city of San Francisco with no takeovers. Yes, Full Self Driving is already here. We just need to keep an eye on it. And everyone in the US can now buy a car with this software. You lucky bastards. Just amazing. But as per a recent issue of T-Zone, Tesla China's official magazine, it appears that the Cybertruck will also retain its sail pillar storage, as could be seen in the March 2023 issue of the publication. It is an old picture as this was also shown at the reveal event, but if they keep showing it off now, there is of course a good chance it will make it to the final production. And we got to see a video from Neuralink this week as they wrote on Twitter, our accelerated lifetime tester age our implant at 4x speed, developing new ways of expediting long duration tests at scale allowing us to iterate faster, identify low probability failure and reduce animal use. Nice, as Joe Justice also wrote to this video, automotive testing is the bottleneck for innovation. 50% of product budget should be improving automated testing every week forever. Just as we know, Tesla Factories does automotive testing. And Lucid announced plans to lay off 18% of its workforce, amounting to about 1,300 employees. The news came after Lucid released its fourth quarter and full year 2022 financial result last month and Lucid is in desperate need of cutting costs. But not a good sign when a company that should be rapidly ramping up production is instead laying off 18% of its workforce. And this comes at the same time as Lucid recalls over 600 of their cars because they suddenly lose power. Yes, things are not looking too good for Lucid. And while the many OEMs are cutting back on cost and staff, Tesla continues to expand. Tesla signed lease for 60,000 square foot of a service center in Halifax in Canada. Nice. And Elon showed off the power of having Twitter as a platform to connect to Tesla's customers, as Tesla will work on making their cars able to detect if there are any occupants in the car. If so, not turn off the car and keep the climate control on. And speaking of Twitter, Elon did just become the most followed person on Twitter. And we got the specs of the new Kia EV9, and it looks like it will be quite a capable EV. With 280 miles of range, 0 to 60 in 5.3 seconds, 800 volt architecture, level 3 autonomy, and 5000 in towing capacity. Pounds, I'm guessing here, but that is all around some very good specs. And new data from Recurrent Auto showed that the EV batteries are lasting far longer than critics claim. As we can see, the Bolt that have had recalls to change the batteries is of course standing out with the Kona, but at the top we can see the Model Y, but that has not been out for long, but the number two is the Tesla Model 3 that has been out for more than five years. So of the 15,000 owners in this study, only 1.5% has to replace their batteries outside the recall or warranty period. So 98.5% has never changed their battery. Not what you would expect if you listen to all the skeptics. But I can also show you my own battery degradation of my Model 3 from 2019 that has just passed 155,000 kilometers. And my battery has degraded less than 5%. Nothing I notice at all. Still driving as good as when I bought it. And this is just some of a German's great software in their EVs. Don't worry, Carriot got this all under control. <laughs> and speaking of great software, Robert here on Twitter shared a great insight to SpaceX approach to software. I met the fourth employee of SpaceX, Hans Koenigsmann. I asked him how they did the code that lands rocket on Earth so they can be reused. 
Oh, one man wrote that. <laughs> What? Yes, it's better for a single man. He told me to write it because one person could keep the whole system in his head, get more people involved, and it gets confusing. He told me. And this stands in very big contrast to how Volkswagen thinks you solve software by throwing six billion dollars and five thousand software engineers at it. <laughs> no wonder their software sucks. And Giga Mexico seems to become the car factory on the planet that is going to cost the least amount of water per car produced. Guess we need some more protest against Tesla and all their crazy water consumption. Just not good enough to be the best. But Bill Gates says we need to change the way we do almost everything to fight climate change. And Elon reported to the Post, not having a massive short position on Tesla would be a step in the right direction. And Toyota lost an appeal to the federal court in Australia and must pay up to 1.3 billion dollars to vehicle owners that had faulty diesel particle filter in their cars. Toyota's own little diesel gate. But while the vehicle owners themselves will be compensated for the faulty filters, there will be no compensation for citizens living in the cities and towns who had to breathe in the higher level of pollution caused by Toyota's faulty exhaust system. Thanks, Toyota. As Greenpeace said, while once the leader in clean car technology, Toyota has fallen way behind. This last example shows Toyota is willing to release a car with car defects, leading to excess pollution and high costs for their owners. And it took a court case for them to take responsibility. And Tesla China is offering a new service with official body stickers. Maybe Tesla is warming up for in-house wraps of the Cybertruck. That would be nice. And Ford releases the Mustang Mach-E for the Australian market, so that is nice. And I really like this little ad they made with Henry Ford talking about vision without execution is just hallucination, which reminded me of GM. But anyway, let's just take 30 seconds to listen to Henry Ford. You can't build a reputation on what you are going to do. Vision without execution is just hallucination. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. If I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse. And Lamborghini showed off the $550,000 supercar that does a zero to 60 in 2.5 seconds. Tesla's family sedan, the Plaid Model S, costs $440,000 less and does a zero to 60 25% faster. Yes, the ICE supercar is dead. And you can now again order the F-150 Lightning, but Ford has also raised the price of the car in the US. The pro version that should have costed $41,000 now costs $61,000 and nearly $100,000 on top platinum trims. But I don't know how Ford would ever have been able to do the $40,000 car, as they have negative margins of 40% of the EVs even at these levels. Seem to have been more a marketing stunt to get close to Tesla's Cybertruck price that they showed of $40,000, but not something they would ever go through with. So going to be exciting to see what the Cybertruck will actually cost when it goes back on sales. And in a letter to Nitsa, Ford announced that it is abandoning its petition that would allow it to operate autonomous vehicles without physical human control. That seems weird. Just a week after they announced their Project T3, which should have autonomous features already in 2025. And Tesla rolled out a new feature in the app so you now not only can see the ETA of your car if your wife is on its way home, but you can also see the route it's taking. Very nice. And we finally got the Giga Beer, only available here in Europe. Finally something we get in Europe that you don't get in the US. So I have of course ordered a pack of three to test them out. Yes, they cost $30 a bottle, so not the beer you buy for your party, but I will let you know how they are. And Tesla Full Self Driving wrote on Twitter, My Tesla has been driving me 27 miles to and from work each day for the last couple of months. I just sit in my car and watch it drive. Why is nobody talking about this? Exactly. Tesla already have a full self-driving car. They just need to make sure they never make mistakes. And just look at what the Tesla sees. Just incredible. 
and more than 50 consumer and environmental groups representing millions of supporters from 26 countries have written an open letter to the new CEO of Toyota calling on the company to commit to phasing out the sales of internal combustion engines in the US and Europe by 2030 and globally by 2035. The letter also calls on Toyota to end all anti-climate lobbying immediately. Yes, Toyota, better do what the people want or they will not buy you polluting cars for very long. And before we end off with a bit of fun, I just want to make a quick shout out to my new patrons and members of this new show. My new Patreon producer, Nicholas Bucard. Thank you so much for all the support. I am doing this all by myself, but you guys are all the producers of this new show. Thank you. And a big and special thanks to Supporter of the Week. And this week's winner is Korkal Bolt or no cobalt or whatever it is but thank you so much he has been a best in tesla superhero of mine for seven months thank you so much for all your support please contact me on this email down below so i can get your address and send you your support of the week winner t-shirt thank you and let's end off with a bit of fun Watching the old legacy automakers trying to hit a goal of making an EV with great software. That is all we have time for in this new show. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. It really does help this video out a lot. And if you did like it, maybe you want to consider hitting that subscribe button notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos just like this one. And don't forget, if you want to become an executive producer and get news articles every day, Monday to Friday, video series, becoming news, access to all my research, charts and spreadsheets, and become part of my little executive club of executive producers, head over to bestintesla.com and join with the members button. But hurry up, it will be limited to 100 members only. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. And if you want to support the channel even more, remember you can for as little as $1 become a patron of this channel and get your shout out on this show. You can also become a member of the YouTube channel to get a shout out and some extra perks. Hit the members button to find out more. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter. I tweet all the news as it comes out and more. And check out the merch store to get some merchandise and support the show. Now it's also possible to support the show without buying anything, becoming a member or a patron. There is a link to a donation options in the show notes. And also as simple as hitting the super like button. But going forward, I will be making more videos for patrons and members only. And I will give my YouTube members and patrons early access to my videos whenever possible and make my videos ads free for members and patrons only. So don't miss out. And thank you. For watching and until next time take care out there and be nice <laughs>